for this session, the final session of the day, we have grants training with our illustrious grants chair for a district. And the key to me is with grants is Rotary System is just an amazing system where we have a chance to multiply the dollars that we use depending on whether a project we have qualifies, the nature of the project, etc. And to me, we're really remiss if we don't figure out a way not only to make our projects creative, fun, inclusive, but also to tap into those matching dollars that help magnify what we do. And with that in mind, I'm going to turn it over to Kevin, and he's going to learn you everything there is to know about grants. Kevin? All right. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, it's been a busy couple of days for me. My youngest daughter, my oldest daughter, just bought her first house along with her husband. And we've been tearing flooring up and doing all kinds of things in the house. And I literally uh, came from dumping flooring uh, uh, and getting rid of that to changing my shirt and coming here. So uh, it's great to be here with all of you today. Uh, last time, we, last couple times we did this, Lance Singleton and I did it together. Uh, but you're stuck with me for the whole thing. So welcome. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is, if I do this right, on the arrow, that's the problem. Well, that didn't work either. There we go. All right, so we're going to talk about the Rotary Foundation, district grants, and global grants in that order. I'm pretty sure. This is Lance's presentation. And all the animation is not going to work because we're doing it this way. So. All right, so first, what's the Rotary Foundation? Well, it's at the most basic level, it's a 501c3 organization that funds the good work of Rotary beyond the, beyond the club level. And I would imagine most of us are donating to the Rotary Foundation either directly through Club Central or because we're sending checks or because we uh, are, are having funds collected through our Rotary clubs. But it's entirely funded by no donations to the World Fund and the Rotary Foundation from Rotarians and other people around the world who are donating to the foundation. Uh, this is not working so well. Here we go. All right. So, why is it important? Well, first, uh, the foundation, the grants process, is the backbone of how we do our, our good works across the world. And uh, we're going to talk in detail about both of those. But grants put the face on the work that we do at the, with, with in Rotary globally and in our communities. And it's important when we do projects, we make sure Rotary gets credit for, for doing that because that's you know, part of what we're doing is we're trying to spread the good word of Rotary, Rotary and what it is we do in the world. Services by people join and stay in Rotary, at least we hope so, and, and involvement in grants has been shown to increase club participation, feeds into increased Rotary Foundation giving, and makes Rotary Club members become Rotarians, which is, which is important, right? So, those are raised, as I said already, through donations to the annual fund within the World Fund uh, and support humanitarian grants. All Rotarians are asked to give every year, it's every Rotarian every year, I'm sure you've heard that before, and donors are thanked by, by giving level. So, every Rotarian every year, you, did, you gave something every year, right? Sustaining members, and most, the vast majority of our clubs are sustaining clubs, which means that all the club members donate at least $100 annually to the Rotary Foundation. Um, many clubs do that through the collection of the dues process. A Paul Harris fellow is someone who, over the course of their lifetime, gives at least $1,000 to the Rotary Foundation. A Paul Harris Society member is distinct from a Paul Harris fellow because they have pledged to give, as long as they can afford to do it, or able to do it, or choose to do it, $1,000 every single year. And then major donors are Rotarians or couples who give at least $10,000 over their lifetime. And then we have Polio Plus, um, and obviously all the emphasis around eradication of polio, and of course we're this close. And we have uh, two uh, countries that are endemic right now still, and we're trying to get past that. And so it's important that we keep the pressure up and keep giving. Frankly, I think that, that, that and I told some people earlier or last week this very thing, I think that this close campaign actually slowed down because it took Many people thought we were almost done, and they focused their giving somewhere else. And really, this is the most critical time because we're, because we're so close that we've got, to, we've got to push hard in those two countries and keep things from cropping up in the other countries where we've killed it. And, and 
keep giving and, until this is gone. I will tell you, I've, I've shared this with my club and I have shared this in other meetings, my mom's a polio survivor. And this part of what we do in Rotary is really important to me and my family. And we've got to knock it out, we've got, we've got to finish the job. Endowments are earnings, uh, are, are earnings supported through the, the Rotary Fund. Endowment donations, the earnings support the World Fund. Those, do, those earnings go to support the World Fund and keep growing the pot that's available to us in all of our districts. Benefactors are donors who pledge plan giving through their, through their uh, endow, to the endowment rather. And the bequest society members are benefactors who pledge at least $10,000. All right, DDF is a term we're going to use, be using a lot uh, during the, the course of this presentation. It stands for District Designated Funds. And basically 50% of the district's donations come back directly to us every single year. What happens is we donate it this year. Three years later, 50% of it comes back directly to the district and gets divided 50% by our district, 50% between district grants, and 50% to global grants. And so we'll talk in more detail about how, it, how that gets used and what that process looks like. But it comes back to us three years after we send it off to the Rotary Foundation. The other half is spent indirectly by the district through Rotary Foundation matches on global grants. So we'll get into that later as well. All right, so first we're going to talk about district grants. And actually, we need to, we're going to skip over this slide because this slide has nothing to do with district grants. Um, which, in fact, that's a change in the training. So if you've been through this before, let me be very clear about this. We used to believe incorrectly that all district grants had to conform to the areas of focus. They do not. Global grants do, district grants do not. So there's a lot of, there's a tremendous amount of flexibility on district grants in terms of what we can do with that money. As long as it's eligible, we can do a wide variety of projects that don't necessarily have to tie to any of these areas. So since the slide came up, we'll, I'll, I'll address it that way. Now the guidelines, some of these are Rotary Foundation guidelines, some of these are our district's guidelines, but in terms of you, your club doing a project, these are the guidelines. Number one, the club has to be qualified. And there's a process to, to make sure that you're qualified, and, and it's pretty simple. Projects must adhere to the terms and conditions for the Rotary Foundation grants. They must include active Rotary member involvement and project leadership. In other words, we don't, want, we don't want to be doing somebody else's project. Clubs provide at least a third of the project funding, and the district provides no more than two-thirds. So basically, if you have a $3,000 project, your club puts up $1,000, the district will put up $2,000. It's a, it's a two-to-one match. Clubs may submit more than one project proposal, but we need you to rank them for us. If you want to submit two or three ideas for projects and do the paperwork to, to support those, the committee is happy to look through those and, and, and work through them, but make sure we know which one's your number one, number two, and number three priority. Um, because if, if, if you don't tell us what your priorities are, we're going to make our own presumptions on which project we think is the better of the three if we have to par, par, spread things down and not grant all three projects. And the projects must be new to your club. What that means is if every year, year you go do Project X and you decide this year we're gonna get the district to help pay for it, that's not gonna cut it, okay? It has to be a new project. We're not gonna ongoing, uh, going to fund your ongoing activity. Um, all right, so how do you qualify? Number one, you have to have at least two members participate in this training or similar training. So there have been three opportunities in the last month to do that. Uh, a, month, a month ago today, right where you are now, and then at the, um, at the, at the PETS training, Personal Life Training Seminar training uh, last weekend. Uh, you have to submit a signed memorandum of understanding every single year. Uh, if you've done it three years ago, it doesn't count. It has to be done every year because it has to be signed by the pre current president and the president-elect who's coming in in July. You have to submit the club financial plan, and that can sound a little intimidating, but it really isn't. The club financial plan is simply a, a prepared document that you sign and say, okay, our club understands the rules, and the rules, but make sure before you turn it in, you've read it and you understand it, because there are things in there like every club, if you're going to do a district grant, is required to have a separate checking account for your grant projects. It doesn't have to be a separate account for every project, 
but you cannot run your projects through your club's general checking account. There has to be a separate account. And the reason for that is we need to see copies of all the checks, copies of your statements, and, and a whole kinds of supporting documentation so that we can say, yes, the project was completed. And we don't want to see every meal to every caterer you do, and, and we just want to keep it clean and just have all the grants in, in, in one bank account. Um, so that's important. Um, the club must, or, or the annual fund giving goal has to be at Norbury Club Central. And we'll show you later where that is, and it's one number. And you have to have it in the system, and it's a requirement of our district to do that. It's not a Rotary Foundation requirement, it's something that one of our district governors started a few years ago. And the reason for that is if you don't have a goal in the system, you're probably not going to hit your goal, right? All right, so you also have to support the Rotary Foundation at least $50 per capita. So if you've got... Special request for you to talk louder. Talk louder! Yes. All right, I will talk louder. Is that better? Excellent. All right. So, um, the Rotary Foundation giving has to be at least $50 per capita. So if you're in a sustaining club where every member is giving $100 a year, this isn't a concern for you at all. It's, it's, it's handled. Uh, you must submit final reports for all district grants prior to the current year, which is the 2017-18 year. If your projects aren't completed and we have projects in place, we're not going to give you more money to not report on, okay? And, and that is just as much for your club's protection as it is for the district, district trying to make sure you're doing your documentation because the Rotary Foundation can come in at any time and say, we want to audit this project from this club. And if you don't have your documentation in place where you have a copy of it and we have a copy of it, you're not going to pass the audit, and that's not good for any of us. And then finally, you have to maintain the grants checking account I referred to previously. All right? So, your contacts for district grants currently are Lance Singleton, who is the district grants chair, Patricia Reyes Duarte, who is also a chair, and then I'm your Rotary Foundation chair. And that's going to be evolving coming into the next year. The other thing I'll tell you about district grants is that, that we're, we're gearing up right now. The application should be online at, on. on um, the district5750.org website under the foundation section. And the deadline to guarantee you get considered in the first round is going to be May 15th. So make sure you get those grant applications in, processed, and in the, in the system so we have them by May 15th. Now you can continue to submit project ideas, but to assure that you're considered in the first round, you have to be in by then. And then what we will do as a committee mostly they because I just participate from a conversation perspective and they do all the work but in terms of what you what we will do is we will review all the applications we'll, we'll make sure they're eligible projects we'll try if at all possible to give every club their first project choice then we'll go through and um, see what we have left and if we can fund a bunch of projects at, at, at full value we will we may come back to you and say you know what we have so many requests what if we do a 50 50 split is that okay but we'll come back to you and try to let you do a second project if we have the funds available. And so we will spend the rest of, that, of the next month and a half from the middle of May through the end of June finishing that evaluation project process, not letting you know where your club stands, and then getting the grant request to the system so it's ready to approve on July 1. And then uh, Ken Waterbury at the Rotary Foundation will view it, he'll approve it, or he'll come back with questions, and we'll get the questions addressed. And then we will get the, the probably we'll get the money about the middle of July. We can send it to your clubs, and you, you can do your projects in the summertime. Um, if we drag this on and let it go past the first of the year, your projects won't get started until the fall. And that's not you're trying. To, in many cases, you're trying to get these projects done so they're ready for the school year to start. So we're, we've we've moved our process forward over the last couple of years, trying to make that possible for you. Any questions about district grants before I move on? Okay, I don't hear any, so we're going to move on. Uh, district grant evaluation. Okay, so I've, I've talked through all this already without using the slide. Um, so we'll move on. The calendar, May 15th, 
taught through all this already. All right. Stewardship. Supervision of Rotarians. Yes. Yes. All I heard is Kevin and District Grant, so repeat your question. What is the maximum on a district grant? All right. The general rule of thumb is usually around $5,000 for a project. We have gone $7,500 occasionally, and I can remember one time we did $10,000 because it was a district grant supporting travel for a global grant. But generally, rule of thumb, 5,000 5, to 7,500 is sort of the outer range of where we're going to do it, in large part because we have a lot more clubs participating, and we're trying to make sure everybody gets a piece of the pie. Does that answer your question? Yes. Perfect. So that's the total project size, so figure roughly two-thirds two of that. All right. So supervision of Rotarians involved with handling the funds. We... We make sure, that there's basically a process to assure that everything gets reviewed, we're ready for audits if necessary, we want to avoid conflicts of interest, and if you suspect there's any fraud, which I think is the next, no, that's not the next slide. If, you, if you're concerned about stewardship, there's, a, there's an anonymous website where you can go report it on, on if you can go to, go to district rotary5750.org, go to the foundation page, there's a place where you can anonymously report any concerns you have about the integrity of how funds are being used. So, all right, so here's how it sort of breaks down over the last three years. Uh, the top number is the amount of money that was available to us for district grants. Um, and you can see how many were done each year, how many clubs participated, and what the average grant size was. I can tell you that for 2018-19, the amount of money available is right around $73,000. So it's substantially more than we've had the last ever, really, but certainly in the last couple of years. And so get out there and get your clubs working to, to, to develop some great projects and then come request the money. All right, global grants. Now this is where the areas of focus are important. Global grants must conform or align with one of these areas of focus. And you can read the list, I'm not going to read it to you, but, but we find a lot of water projects, we find a lot of education projects, um, but any of these six areas work. All right, so how are district grants and global grants alike? Number one, they can fund both local and international projects, which sometimes surprises people. They think of district grants as just local projects, but you can do a district grant that is going to service some other part of the world. And likewise, global grants can be run right here in our district. You just have to have an international partner that's willing to help, to help you make it happen. Uh, it involves matches from the district. Both global grants uh, and district grants receive matching funds from the Rotary Foundation. I'm sorry, global grants also receive matching grants from the Rotary Foundation. And then they require similar club qualifications, reporting, and financial management. All right, so how are they different? Uh, as we said a while ago, typically district grants are $7,500 or less. Global grants must be at least $30,000, so they're much larger projects. Typically, but not always, a district grant will have involved one club. Now, we've had as many as three clubs participate in a district grant. In Stillwater, for example, so a few years ago, we, each club did three projects, but we all three participated in all three projects. So it is possible for clubs to partnership, but there's going to be a club that is the lead club on, on every district grant, but more than one can participate. In a global grant, there are going to be at least two partner clubs, one here and one, country, one in a country somewhere else in the world. And there can be more, and there usually are more, but there have to be at least two. District grants do not require a community assessment, but it is an absolute require requirement that global grants do. What that means is you can't just say, hey, let's go do a project and go start doing it. You have to go in to the area that's going to be served and do an assessment. Because what we don't want to do is go big a bunch of, dig a bunch of water wells and find out what they really wanted was outhouses. What they really needed was outhouses. So um, you have to do an assessment to, to validate that there's a need in the community for the project you want to do. District grants do not have to have measurable goals, but global grants
clients do, and not only are there going to be requirements for measurable goals, but those can and likely may and will be audited by the Rotary Foundation after the project has been completed. So it's, it's really important that you give a lot of thought to your measurable goals, what they are, and make sure that they're achievable through, the, through your project. Uh, and then how well were they met? That's the next thing. Uh, again, areas of focus are not a requirement for district grants. They absolutely are for global grants. District grants are governed by our district, primarily through uh, me and the district grants committee, certainly to an extent the, the district governor is involved in that, uh, where the Rotary Foundation governs global grants and uh, have, a, have a much stronger hand in what happens, how they're done, and auditing and doing follow-up. So, your resources on global grants are Mary Jane Calvey, who's our International Service Projects Chair. What Mary Jane's job is, is to go out and build relationships in other parts of the world. So that when we do a project, we're confident we have a good partner. Um, you know, when, what you don't want to do is go spend a whole bunch of money and do a $30,000 project in Ethiopia or someplace and have the money disappear. So you want to make sure that you have a partner you can rely on that's going to make sure the project gets done. Larry Stone is actually the Global Grants Chair. He's the one who coordinates the collection of the data and, and the committee that, that, that reviews all these projects and allocates the money. And then again, I'm involved as well. So, that's the training. So, what I do want to do, if I can get to the website. Okay, so this is our district's website. If you go to the foundation tab and come down to district grants, Here on the left are, and this has not been updated yet, here are where, the, where you will find your application for 1819, the Mem Memorandum of Understanding, the grant rule, woo, the grant rules, the financial plan template, and then all the reports for the prior years, all the reports for the prior years are available down here. So use the right report for the right year. And when you're doing grants applications, make sure that you that the, the, the revenue and the expenses match. It's really good if they're the same number. And on the global grant side, there are some resources here as well. And then I alluded earlier to the, the reporting misuse. It's right there. So, and that is overseen by past district governors, is who actually monitor this and, and follow up on any reports that happen. I'm not aware of any report ever having to happen. Chuck might know differently. So, then, So then when you come to My Rotary, come to Club Central, Rotary Club Central, whoops, this tool is not liking me. Lance, what am I doing wrong? You're just laughing at me. I know that, and that's not what I'm complaining about. What I'm complaining about is every time I move this thing, it minimizes the screen. All right, there we go. I'm not Lance Singleton. So if you don't have a login for my rotary, it's relatively easy to do. You just create an account. All right. And then, un 
under the goal center, click on Rotary Foundation Giving, I'll edit, there we go, that's the button I want, and you can come in and put your goal, which I can't really see because I've got pictures over the top of it, that's where all of you are, but there's right there, just put that number in, and that's how you get qualified on that piece of the requirements to do, to do grants. So what, and this is obviously for my club. So what questions do you have? That's okay, I don't need to see it. Say that again. Terrific, go ahead, Chuck. I agree with all that, and you know, Mary Jane, my club is in the midst of, of a project in Columbia, it's a water distribution project, and Mary Jane Calvi was an invaluable resource to our club in, in getting all that done and getting the paperwork through. So uh, we have some great resources in our district, like Chuck, like Mary Jane, like Larry Stone, who really know this process and can help your club do great things. Anybody else? Yes, sir. I understand from several years ago, at least, that there are some districts that we will not, that Rotary International Foundation will not allow uh, district uh, global grants for. Do we have any idea what those districts are? I do not. Chuck, do you have a list or an OA list? There are. There are some.
Any more questions? I guess maybe one more comment. One thing you'll sometimes find is what we call missionary projects in the old days, where somebody will come back to your club and go down on a mission at some place. And they'll find somewhere really good people, really good needs, that need something or other. And they'll want to do it. Any of the almost all of the criteria, probably because there's not a rotary club around here that cares one who. And, and when we talked about the area, you have to have a local partner. And in the old days, what you do is you go get somebody to sign the paperwork and say, okay, we'll approve this. But under the, the new grant model, which has now been introduced, I think around the state here, there's still not actually a real life club. They have to be interested in the project. They have to be the people that are going to manage the project and vouch for it. So when, when, you, when you get request that comes to you and says, this is a really, really great project, we really really want to help do it. Um, you need to start by saying to them, that's great, have the local voter to come contact us and we'll move right on from there. The criteria for these things are really very simple. When the project's open and the water's flowing, and ask the people who are drinking the water, where did you get the water? If the answer's not for Rotary, then it's not a project for all that money in. Rotary is hired to spend tens of thousands of dollars and either have the project go over and die after the first uh, gas that breaks and nobody visits it, or uh, this church or this mission or that organization uh, gets off the dirt. Rotary is the most famous thing for the parents' money, uh, and you really ought to know what Rotary is. All right. Any more questions? If not, I'm going to turn it back over to Hal. All right, thanks, everybody.